They come to do battle and hope to take home the spoils from the South East Centre. They're away. Neil Cuff's got a good start from the outside down there. And Bernie Townsend, Martin Goodell, moving up into second place, but dropping back to third as they get to the first corner. Oh, and over goes one of the outfits. I couldn't quite see. I think that was one of our Welsh boys, Erwin Bowman, I think. And I think Hill Phillips rides on the side there. So Barrick it is. Making the others look at his way. Oh, down, and that was a nasty tumble. I think there was a bit struggling that went down there. Playing on the circuit. Yeah. Off we go then with racing number 17. Another good lineup of 350cc boys. Now, John Underwood coming through on the inside of David Mears, pushing hard all the way as they come around there. John Underwood certainly got the goings of him on that inside line. Dave Mears may have to cut back on the inside if he wants to retake the victory, but maybe I'm wrong. He's going hard around the outside now. John Underwood's locked up heavily underneath him. These two are locked in back on. Made the same mistake and went wide also. Losing his second place and he was go. So David Mears now looks a little bit more comfortable on the front line. He was scopes in hot pursuit in second place. And it's one. And Alan Dan there bringing up the rear wall. Well, Finishes the winner's time at 1 minute 24.92 seconds. Right on time, away they go down that back straight. And they're quite a bunch into the first corner this time. As the uh, start line's getting grippy and they're all getting away a bit more even. But look at them coming round there now. CC riders in the country performing here this afternoon at the Mason Aces Scintillator 500. Very close indeed, those bosses have come round there. Oh, and that Turn they come, Lee Gaiden still holding on to it. Look at Jason stop now, really trying hard to put the pressure on the leader. Nice tight line, and they're going to come out there, they're really close on the line, Lee Gaiden. Jason stop takes it from Lee Gaiden in second place. Mick Morphy. Oh, okay, there it goes in the second ride, the second win. Oh, number four. Then Richard Emerson, then Alan Harmer, and then 171, Scott Pegler, and then Julian Phipps. And a bit of a spill there for, I believe it was Simon Gittings. And he's playing on the circuit at the moment. Shaken. But not stirred, pulling out a stake, putting them down in nice neat piles, and mind the speaker cable. Thank you. This is the 500cc final. We're looking for that number one, Lee Lanham. He's had two rides and two wins, but he's not off the line so smart this time. He's back in fourth place. He's Trevor Banks is there, but look at Lee Lanham coming through from fourth to second in one easy move from Trevor Banks. One up to the right. in front, but look at Lee Lanham, he's gaining yards. Trevor Banks eases ahead again there on that back straight and throws it into the corner, but Lee Lanham is pushing hard on the inside, he's gaining a few yards on that turn, but Trevor Banks goes the moment. Lee Lanham's hard on his heels, he's pushing for that inside line, he's got his front wheel up alongside, he's right there, 
Sugarbanks is going with him though, he's trying hard all the way. Lee Lanham almost overcooked it, almost drops it, but he gains it. Sugarbanks, winner of yesterday's Salisbury Sizzler, but here at the Scintillator 500, he's going to have to settle for the runner-up spot. The chequered flag is coming out. Lee Lanham is out in front. Sugarbanks is doing it. I'm expecting to see quite a few different numbers out here. As we look to race seven, I think you'll agree, a very, very good lineup of uh, competitors for this afternoon's event. Looking forward to some very quick racing. On the evidence that we've seen so far, I think we are in for some cracking racing this afternoon. As they get underway then with the first of the very quick 500s, as we go into that first bend, all sorts of problems going into that first bend, as you can see. Quickly the marshal, the yellow flag underway and they come past us as you can see yellow flag flying and he's expecting to see that red flag put out in the interest of safety they've got machinery and riders on that uh, first bend but it looks as if all are indeed up on their feet Away we go with the start of race 18 as they go down the back straight. Mark Harris has made a terrific start to get to that first bend. He's got Mark Seabright and Steve Bishop right there with him. Dave Mears has come around the outside of all of them. And Dave Mears together as they come past me. Dave Mears on the outside, Mark Seabright on the inside. It's those two that have got away. And I'm looking to see Mark Harris perhaps in fourth place to stay right there with them. John Underwood is the uh, rider there, he's third place. He had a good ride first time out as well. I remember perhaps that he finished second to Vince Kenshin, lying in third spot at the moment, but Mark Seawright, who had uh, a third place first time out, going well in his second 350 ride, leading from Davies and John Underwood. Good to see him in this sort of form as Dave Mears is now in trouble from John Underwood and John Underwood moves through into second place looking perhaps even for that first as we watch him go into the last bend. Dave Mears is not content to give up that he comes back at John Underwood and Mark Seawright going a little bit wide as he now he makes it close to the line but Mark Seawright just gets it. A good challenge from John Underwood there finishing in second place. Dave Mears finishing in third and Dave Perry comes up in fourth place. So away we go then with the rerun of race 28 where we of course the second leg rides off the south of the DC Dave Steer has made a much, much better start this time. Equally, John Hiscock is there as well. He's got to run, but look at Dave Steer come through on the inside. Those two together as they go up the back straight. You can't see John Hiscock from here because Dave Steer has uh, got him on the inside. As they come round the top bend, John Hiscock has got a wheel in front, but only just. Right at the bottom of the door with John Hiscock and uh, Dave Steer together. Dave Steer has got the wheel in front. Tries to go through again. He's found a gap once again on that bottom corner. And this time he's got himself in front. John Hiscock looking to come through on the inside and he goes through. A terrific scrap between these two. Chopping and changing lines as they go in and out of the East John Hiscock. And watch again if they think it's right that gap on the exit of the bend. This is where he seems to get the advantage going up that back straight. He's right on the back wheel of John Hiscock. Look to find a way through on this top bend. Gone for the outside line this time. John Hiscock trying to drive out, but Dave Steer's done it again. He's gone right the way around the outside. A terrific top bend from Dave Steer. And Andy Orchard as they this time get to the front. This is where they seem to have the advantage going up that back straight. They pull away from John Hiscock. But John Hiscock certainly won't be wanting to give up. A great scrap between these two. As John again closes up on this top bend. Dave Steer holding a very, very tight line. He indeed takes the checkered flag. A great scrap between those two. Terrific sidecar racing, that's the sort of thing we hope we're going to see a lot more of this season. Seven is on the line and waiting to go, anxiously looking for that green flag to come out, and away we go. Kevin Vicknick again has made a very good start. I think the Steen Garten is up there with him, and he's looking for them as they come round this first bend. Roger Long is going the wrong way around here. Steen Garten has got to the front, the youngster Roger Long right there with him. Kevin Vicknick still in third place. 
Well, that's how they get spread out. Roger Lobb going after that lead. He's right up there amongst the points. I'm sure we're going to see him in the final. And I'm watching all the new letters come round now. We were told about the change that Justin Elkins was coming out on somebody else's bike. It looks as if it is Dave Barnaby's bike that he's come out on, and he's now up into third place. So, Roger Lobb, how do you go for the lead as he goes round the outside on Dean Gar? quickly indeed, right up there as well as they go into the last lap, and Justin Elkins perhaps looking for the lead as he goes the long way around on that top bend, well this is brilliant from Justin Elkins, just to get on somebody else's machine and come out right like this, indeed he quickly got used to it didn't he, as he went into that bottom bend, you can see now that he's put his command on this race, and Justin Elkins it is that takes the win, for Roger Lauber takes second place, Dean Garten in third, and Kevin Vicknick I think he just might have squeezed that fourth or maybe fifth place. Well, away we go with the last of the qualifying races. This to find out who goes into the final. John Hiscock knowing that he's got a score well to be sure of a place in the final. And mathematically, I'm sure he's done all the working out in the pits before he come out as he goes up that back straight leading from Dave Steer. You remember that terrific race these two had earlier on today. We wonder if it's going to be repeated because Dave Steer... bottom bend that he seems to be quicker. He gets the drive on much quicker than most of the other outfits going up that back straight. John Hiscock and Tony Bemister though holding some good lines this time. They look to have got quicker as the afternoon's gone on. They got close again. This is where they get the advantage going up that back straight. Then letting John Hiscock know that they're there, they'll be looking for a way through. Watch how tight that Dave Steer holds it coming out of this top bend. John Hiscock drifts out slightly, but Dave Steer that time wasn't close enough to take advantage of him. Into the bottom bend they go. Quickly trying to work out what this means in overall points at the moment, but uh, I think it means automatic qualification for John Hiscock as if they stay like this. Tony Bemister looking over his shoulder, he knows that Dave Steer's there, he's coming through on the inside, it's going to be close. Oh, he's doing a terrific last bend from Dave Steer. Well, <laughs> I don't know what the lap scorers are going to make of that one. We wait for the judge that's sitting spot on the line because from where I was looking, that was so, so close. We stay with the 500cc sidecars and see the rest of the competitors come out for their first ride of the afternoon. the race has been stopped so we'll make the way back to the start line looking for a restart. So away we go with the race four in the program this with the 500cc sailors and we'll watch them go past us as Mark Seabright has got to that first bend. Mark Seabright has got to that first bend. Two or three main problems on that first bend. That looks like Paul Harry who is trying to find his way through from third place in the second. We'll pick them up as they come round past us, but it still is. Mark Seawright has got to the front. Paul Harry indeed is in second place. Deep Paul Harry in third. Oh, we move on rapidly to race 12 and we're already underway with race 12 and of course this is the second leg ride for the solo competitor of the month. Down the 
down that back straight. It is long seen by the leads. But he's up against Rory again. That's rider number 10. So these two out again in the same race. And indeed, Paul Hurry is taking up the battle with Mark Seabright again. himself at the front. He had a win first time out. Looking to make it a maximum from two rides. He looks in great form, doesn't he, at the moment, Paul Hurry. Mark Seabright trying everything he can to get back at him. As we look to the front, as we come into the pit bend for the third time, it's into the last lap this time as they go past us. Paul Hurry looking every inch in control. Mark Seabright. Past us. And in fact, Gary Lock puts it down in the middle of that thing. So he's left it all for Darren Shand. As we see the checkered flag going, there's all sorts of problems to Mark Seabright. As he puts it down in front of us here by this uh, start line, you can see that Paul Hurry has certainly taken the win. It means that Scott Nichols is elevated up into second place. Say so that for what is being done is in the interest of the rider involved and we all share his concern and please if you could um, bear with us as I say there won't be any racing I'll give you plenty of warning when we will be back with the racing so if there are other things that you can go and have a look at the photo stands the video stand etc now we're getting a very very good result because it's going to be tough to get into that final Away they go, we're looking to see who's made the best of the brakes, but it is ever. Clayton Williams comes right across the rest of the field. Well, he knows he's very good. As we go down that back straight, and Paul Lloyd now under pressure as well as he goes into this top bend. Three riders together as they go into this pit bend. And Clayton Williams knows he's got to go for a big win this time. Puts the pressure on, makes everybody else chase him. It's Steve Fisher that's up. Right the way around the outside of him. Terrific race from these three. As Peter Lloyd now gets himself to the front, he almost locks it up in the middle of the bend. Steve Bishop follows him on the exit of that pit bend. Clayton Williams now back in for a place. As he goes into this pit bend, remember he had a win first time out. This is tremendous riding from Peter Lloyd. As he comes off that pit bend, see Bishop tries to get close in. There's one more lap to go. He's got two riders bearing down on him in this last bend, and Peter Lloyd almost loses it on this last bend. He eventually gets the win though, Steve Bishop gets second. It's Richard Ensign that gets that third place just in front of Clayton Williams. Oh, we may have had to wait quite a long time, but I think you'll agree they've come back in tremendous racing form. Race 17, we see in action once again Phil Pittman who had a second first time out. Rob Wilson who had a win first time out and John Halsey who also had a win. So this promises to be a cracking sidecar heat. Race 17 in your programme and they're already underway. Well, somebody's made a good start, I'll try and pick up for you it is. It's in fact Phil Pittman that's made an excellent start as they get into that first bend. John Halsey is right now with his machinery as he come past me and indeed he's looking down at the engine now as that's very very unfortunate to see Rob Wilson and Mar Tony Miles pulling out. But as we look to the front John Horsley determined not to lose pace with that front run. He knows how critical these two races are. He's had a win already, so he'll be confident that a win and perhaps a second place will be good enough. But as he gets to 
Simmons. Well, I say they look to be going very, very quickly along that back straight. John Horsey chasing after him again. It will be just this last bit that is for a chance to get is not going to be me. The B final for the solos, the consolation final, but a lot of very, very talented riders on that line. Away go the tapes and we get underway with this, the B final, as they come past me for the first time, it's Neville Tatum that again has made a two. from that. Joe Banks right up there in, I was going to say second place, but Clayton Williams sneaks that back again as Neville Tatum sets the pace. Clayton Williams is going after him and tries to get through on the inside. Terrific corner that from Clayton Williams. Tony Bemister on the inside. Bill Pittman. 
That bar was never knocked the outside, he's got, he's got to get the better of him going up that back straight. Well, into the top bend they go, and indeed John Hiscock closing the gap, making sure there's no way for Phil Pittman to come through on the inside. Royce Bedbury up in third place at the moment. Royce Bedbury and Andy Thorne indeed have scored reasonably well this afternoon. That's three of these Finals they promised to be. Oh, it's still John Hiscock leading from Phil Pittman, but Phil Pittman's found a hole on the inside. He goes for that inside line, but John Hiscock, of course, has got the quicker line, just being that slightly wider angle as he comes past us. Phil Pittman's still looking to find a way through on the inside. Again, he's going to get close. Will John Hiscock hold it tighter this time? He knows that Phil Pittman went for that inside line on the exit of his top end. Well, very intelligent riding with John Hiscock. He does indeed hold it tight on this top end. It means there's no way through for Phil Pittman this time. Oh, in fact, Roy Spreadbury has uh, lost his passenger. I'm pleased to see up and OK. As we've still got this scrap going on for first place, John Hiscock forcing Phil Pittman to try and go wide. Oh, he dies back underneath, made it look as if he was going to go wide, gets close to John Hiscock, he's going to be close to the line, but John Hiscock takes it. Great scrap between those two, and I think that's the sort of racing we're going to see in the semi-finals. So, the last of the qualifying rides comes to the start line. It's race 24 in your programme, heat six of the Novice Sidecar event. And as I look at this lineup, of course, uh, we've got no Aubrey still, and we've got four outfits only coming off the line. They're already underway, though. There is indeed Dave Wrench has made a terrific start. Now, the rider has gone into second place going into that first bend is number 169, Gerald Bradley and Terry Hall. And they second place. They're looking to try and get first place if they've got that back straight. Oh, they scored terrifically well this afternoon. An absolute disaster to start the day off. They uh, had engine problems on the start line. It meant they had to just follow everybody home. Oh, this time they're fighting for the lead. And as they go wide, coming past us, looking to try and go round Dave French. Oh, terrific ride this from Dave French. was a number that Martin Hill used to ride. I can confirm to you that is in fact Martin Hill's old outfit that Dave French is riding. And riding pretty near at the moment. Chris Carter doing a good job passengering for Dave French this afternoon. the outside line this time, it's a long way round, he's got to keep the power on, it's into the last lap and I think he may have done enough, he tries to cut across the line off Dave French and Dave French lets him go as he goes into that top corner, almost puts the outfit sideways, he's uh, putting the outfit sideways on the entrance of that then, Dave French you can see has lost a lot of ground, it means that Charlie Bradley and Terry Hall are going to come round off this top then to pick up another checkered flag. So they've certainly turned their fortunes round from that disastrous first ride. A win for them in the last qualifying ride of the day. in this semi-final. John Horsey has taken it by the horns and got to the front. Rob Wilson there in second place, but Dave is trying to come through as well. Dave is taking advantage. He goes right the way around the outside and gets up in the second place. But it is in front at the moment. John Horsey and passenger Colin Hill. Dave Steer and Andy Orchard in second. So Davis has gone incredibly wide. It is Rob Wilson and Tony Miles still there in third place. Oh, so he's trying to stay in line with those front three, they're all moving quickly, Rob Wilson, and closing up on the here. And then you're off the main street, John Halsey. 
still leading at the moment though, around this top bend, it's all closing up behind him, as you can see Dave Steer trying for the inside, Rob Wilson for the outside, and again, well like I can see there's problems for Sage Davis and Justin Westaway, they indeed trailing a chain as they go past me, very very unfortunate for them as they go by me. Look to the back straight, still stay close for that second and third place. Rob Wilson all the time trying to get round the outside. Comes down past us for the third time into the last lap. And you can see John Horsey, 14 days still stay behind him, giving Rob Wilson the chance to go round the outside. And Rob Wilson looks like he's going to go for both of them. A terrific bend for Rob Wilson and Tony Marsh. In fact, gets in front of John Horsey. Desperately trying to close the door on John Halsey going into this top end. He indeed does so. Has he gone wide? John Halsey comes back underneath him. It's John Halsey that takes it. Rob Wilson gets second. Dave Steer gets third. A terrific semi final from those three. Well, does it mean that all those three qualify? I think unofficially I'll say I think it might do, but uh, we'll wait and see. The full lineup consists of Paul Miller and Lester Goodwin, number 17, Brian Palmer and Danny Hogg, number 71, Kevin Laird and Dick Olroyd, number 7, Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen, 78, Alan Peck and Richard Sweeting, number 20, and Ricky Neal and Neil Pockner, who certainly got there the hard way. So, looking across that far side, I can see that they've gone underway for the final of the 500cc sidecar event. And it looks as if Brian Palmer has made the best of the start, but Paul Miller is right there with him as Brian Palmer, in fact, puts his sideways in that first bend. Oh, and indeed, all sorts of problems on that first bend, as you can see. And obviously in the interest of safety, the car to the course bringing the race to a stop.